We, we did a study to see how would brain tap work against opioids. And we actually beat opioids in three different studies. Our biological system is only ran 5% by our conscious mind. Mm -hmm. But people spend all their time trying to change that 5%. When you think of how many people set their goals on January 1, yeah. almost 95% of yeah. them are, are, have fallen off the wagon within 14 days. The unconscious, it's always trying to make connections to what's going on. So if it doesn't think there's a payoff, it won't keep doing it. Hello everyone, this is Dallas McLean, John Falakara from Biohackers Magazine. We're here with our very special guest, a very renowned guest, Dr. Patrick Boyer from BrainTap. I wanted to talk a little bit, Patrick, because it's been a little bit of time since we, we had that interview, um, maybe a year or so ago, mm -hmm. uh, for the cover of Biohackers Magazine. And I, I certainly learned a lot about the introductory phases of a brain tap and what mm -hmm. you guys are doing. So I know we all know it's a headset that, that focuses on light and sound and, and making this therapy and, and optimizing the brain. But what can you tell us that's a little bit more intricate than that? We just had a recent study come out of Brazil it's, we didn't even use the headset. We, we did a study to see how would brain tap work against opioids. And we actually beat opioids in three different studies. So that means that when you downregulate the nervous system, the beta brain that we have, you can start including more alpha and theta, you start to create more of what's called analgesia in the body. Our, our own neurochemistry starts taking over and reduces pain. It's actually, uh, if you do it once a day, we found that it was a better effect than taking the opioids because they, they wear off and so they would have that pain. And we all know that, you know, the opioids are destroying people's livers and all the other right. things that are going on. So right. that's pretty exciting stuff. And then we, I think since we talked, we did our sleep study in Australia. A lot of people are concerned because we have blue light, right? But we have such low level blue light, your eyes are closed. It's not really gonna affect you that much. Some people will be sensitive, so you just don't use it at night. And that's like 20% of the people that would even have that issue. And usually they're blue eyed or, yeah. or green eyed. Mm. And but what we did was we took a study in Australia. We had a graduate student at Quantum University that wanted to do a sleep study. He lived in Western Australia. We went to the, the coal mines and he worked for them already. He was a psychologist. So, and these guys would come into work pretty much drunk every day. You know, that's their, that's their style, mm, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we did was first we used our NeuroCheck technology to show them what drinking did for them. We said, we, the ones that would be willing to not drink during the study, because of course you can't do much with the brain if you're drinking, even one drink we know affects the brain to, to the degree that you can't really get the movement that you want. They woke up in the dark, they went to work in the dark, they worked in the dark, they left yeah. in the dark, they just never saw the light of day. Yeah. Wow. So if they had a circadian rhythm problem, they were the ones. They let us set up our chairs right inside of the coal mine in their entryway. And every day they would come in, they would do a brain tap. So we'd get their brain engaged, get them you know, focused. During lunch, they would do a brain tap before they ate their lunch. They would do one before they left the building. The, and we had a group that didn't do the brain tap with the headset. So we are always wanting to see what would happen if we didn't use the headset. Mm -hmm. Because you know, we're in 120 countries now. We don't, some countries we can't even ship the headset into because they have certain, like Peru for instance, we're starting getting, it's, it's more money in taxes and duties than oh, the equipment uh, costs. Oh, okay, it's so, not because of regulation or right, whatever. It's, right, it's we can ship impact. it there, but if you gotta pay, you know, yeah. $900 for a $600 headset, yeah. you know, you're, you're not gonna do it. <laughs> so, but until we find a way to get through that, you know, I don't know what that would be. So what, what happened was the group that was using the headset in three weeks got a 70% sleep improvement. We actually got to present this to our, our government here, the National Institute of Health. They were blown away. And the group that used the app only got to that same level of improvement, but it took six weeks. But the main the main thing was their quality of life score, the way they felt, mm -hmm. because these, I mean, what kind of life is that, really? But what they found out was, instead of just going home, drinking, passing out, waking up, rinse and repeat, you know, they started, they said, now we have time to be with our family, we have energy, we can do things we don't want to do. They started thinking about how they might improve their life. Because if, you know, you don't know there's a choice, you know, a lot of people don't know that you have a choice to, literally like we're here at the biohacking conference, you, you can biohack, even though you work in the dark, yeah. You can use light therapy to keep your body regulating appropriately. So those are a couple of new studies. We, we we're always doing studies, you know, things going on. So we have a lot of great things going on. The uh, Seminole College actually, since we talked, which did the golf study, 
they won the national championship again. Okay, the, no. the team we did. Again? But the yeah, but the thing that was really Im incredible was now they're having the whole, all their sports teams use it because the golf team had the highest GPA in the school. No way. So wow. it's, which I knew was going to happen. Their brain's going to work better. So whatever they're learning and thinking, they're sleeping better. They're gonna they're gonna perform better in the classroom. I do remember you. We spoke about this uh, opioid study. You were just starting it yep. at that time when you yep. were on that podcast, and uh, I was mm. curious to see um, if any impact on the uh, um, addiction was uh, an issue or not. Uh, have you got right. any feedback on that? We don't have the official reports yet. We just from our science officer. We, he's one working with them. We we just know the positive outcome okay uh, but they're going to publish it once we have that published of course we'll be sharing that with everybody yeah. uh, and our big concern is how do you get people off opioids that's it um, because and we've we've already had anecdotal evidence of that with our 3,000 clinics because doctors mm -hmm. are doing that all the time mm -hmm. most people don't realize that medicine isn't supposed to be for life no even the SSRIs yeah. they're supposed to be for 28 days yeah. but what happens is people start taking that pill and they think it's a supplement Yeah. You know, in the in, it's not a supplement, it's actually doing damage. Yeah. And that's why when you look at a drug commercial, it takes five minutes to get through it for a 30 second commercial because yeah. five minutes worth of damages to the body. So what, we're, so. so what we're talking about here is how, how can we do it without that? And the, the whole thing is with addiction, and that's my background actually. Yeah. Uh, I used to write the programs for DUIs for the state of Arizona. That, yeah. And so the whole thing is about when the brain's out of balance, we know that any of these uh, pharmaceutical solutions, even though we might need them for short term, but the problem is nobody's telling them they're short term. They're easy to get on and hard to get off. And the whole thing is that the brain starts patterning. That's the neuroplasticity we're talking yeah. about. So I think that would be need a longer study, but what we're finding is if they get on brain tap, they're getting the results. The whole thing is, are you getting the physiological result? Are you getting, because we have opioid receptors in our brain, we're triggering those yeah. through, through the brain taps experience. So the government in, in America even, Uh, we have two insurance companies now that pay for brain tap. We have a we wow. have what they call CPT codes, where uh, doctors can now use it and prescribe it and get paid wow. back from insurance companies. And the main reason it started with a group called NORA, the Neuro Ophthalmology Research Association, because they were proving that because they do a lot with concussions, they were proving that we were getting results. So they they would make the claims to the insurance company they were getting these great results. They said, whatever you're doing is fine, we'll, we'll pay for it. So that's just going to keep improving. I mean, I think eventually we're going to find a lot of these biohacks being approved for insurance because yes. yeah. these actually get results. Right. You know, it's not like, I mean, they're approving surgeries that one surgery that I read about, the guy's never had anybody live. And he did seven surgeries. He's like, just, I go, why would you let this guy keep doing the oh surgery? Gosh, it's like, so it's, it's like they're experimenting on people instead of, you know, we experiment on ourselves. Yeah. There's a, a lot of recent talk about the serotonin reuptake inhibitors yeah. and stuff like that. I know you guys have yeah. probably seen it in the news and everything. How are you guys capitalizing on a lot of actual data coming out of that and, and bringing brain tap into the, to the alternative? Well, I, I would like to see more research on the reality because when you're in a Delta, you're going to create serotonin. It's, that's the trigger for the gut to start making it. And we should have a little bit of that all day long. So it's like almost like a drip that keeps going. Most people are in high delta all the time. That means high inflammation, maybe traumatic brain injury was something like that. But I think personally, my belief is they have too much serotonin, but it's, it's not fresh. It's kind of like in the refrigerator, they got a quart of milk. SSRIs are like, you have a quart of milk in there, but instead of using that milk and putting another one in there, they just keep it in the refrigerator for longer periods of time because they, they're holding it in the brain. It doesn't, the brain doesn't want the serotonin from yesterday. It wants the serotonin for this moment. Why is that? Because the molecule changes over time or? Uh, well, you I, change over time. Yeah. Think of your body more like a river than a pond. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is a pond, you jump in, it's going to be the same water every day. Mm -hmm. A river, if we jump in today, it's different tomorrow. It looks like the same river, but it's different because every cell of your body is changing every 40 seconds. True. Based Constant on, motion. Yeah. yeah. We're not the same person even that sat down here and started this interview. No, no. So what happens when we take serotonin uptake inhibitors is it's it's actually causing our brain. We, we did a study with Joquita Handy here in uh, Orange County, California with autistic children. And she'll tell you that the first thing they have to do now is get them off all the drugs. But they're, they're putting a, a lot of energy into the uh, psychedelics um, use instead of using SSRI and, and things oh, like yes. that now. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. We're finding the nice thing about the 
plant-based medicine and things like that is that you we can actually measure that neuroplasticity just like what brain tap does when we're getting more that means the brain can change right yeah so it's not it's not a fixed it's not like we don't say our brain is like a cement block you no. know it's, it's more like it's more plastic it changes all the time mm -hmm. we know that for instance when somebody's doing a psilocybin we know that the brain at a higher level of gamma so it's reorganizing the brain. They say that like plant-based medicine has an intelligence. Like the medicine is actually doing it. And these are ancient traditions. So yeah. even though people think this is new and scary, no, no, no. this has been going on yeah. since the dawn yeah. of history. And, and it's kind of the reminder I tell people, I go, people think when we're old, we're supposed to lose our memories. I said, every ancient culture kept the wisdom of the tribe with exactly. the elders. Yeah. It wasn't with the young people. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so what are we doing differently? It's our lifestyle. Yeah. You know, we're not taking the downtime. We need to recover and heal our brain. I remember last time we spoke on the conference, I was asking you about the headset and the sounds quality mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And you, you told me that you were working on the sound improvement on certain sounds and binaural sound. And also that you were looking at integrating some other Technologies on the top of brain tap, not just the light and the sound, but some something else. We have, we have frequencies now. Yeah, yeah. yeah frequencies. The, the, okay. the headset we're demonstrating here at the biohacking conference is now every two minutes the earphone, the ear lights actually change to another frequency. Oh. So even though the light is 470 nanometer, 650 nanometer light, the light is pulsing. Even though when you look at it, it looks uh, solid. Yeah. That's like watching a movie where we don't see the movie light. It's, because it's going so fast, it's going faster. Like the and, slowest and noje frequency is like 187. So, but they're changing every two minutes. So now we can, we used to only have it on one frequency. And it was the one to turn off the sympathetic drive mm -hmm. and turn on parasympathetic. Now it's every two minutes, it's changing to a new frequency. Interesting. So what are the advantages of changing like every two minutes? Exactly? Well, just like our brain doesn't, just uh, let's use, let's put it in the context of physical fitness. If you go to the gym and do the same workout every day, your muscles are going to atrophy. You're not going to get the muscle growth. You need to have that rest and recovery time. And so with the brain for neuroplasticity, we need to do something different, something new, introduce a new piece. Now that's the same every time, but what's changing is also we're putting, we put sophisio frequencies into the sessions. And we, what we find is it creates a harmonics that triggers different regions of the brain. And part of that is to just, we need to give the we need to keep the brain guessing. With the thousand eight hundred sessions, they have a lot of flexibility there, and they can keep that neural exercise going. Is it that is it uh, a, a transposition of neurophotomodulation directly? Right. Yes. Yeah. So you can do that with with light. Yeah. We're, we're bringing energy like vasodilation, blood flow, circulation, nitric oxide release, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. of those things that happen. But the hemoglobin is absorbing that light energy. And then when the, as, as we tire during the day, we run out of all the things our cells need to operate, NAD, all those yeah. things. We're burning all that stuff out. But if there's light present in nitric oxide, it, we're giving the body back the building blocks to keep that functioning at its highest I level. Think. Now, you still have to make sure you're eating healthy. You know, you can't do this and then eat, you know, candy bars and things like that. You know, you've got to eat healthy for your brain. So we, we talked a little bit about using this on, for the everyday person and everything. But I, I'm also interested in, because last time we spoke, we talked about autism and seeing effects like mm -hmm. that. And also people that have damage to the decision making part of their brain and everything and how it, it acts as a therapy and a regenerative Good. medicine. Can you talk a little bit about yeah. updates with that? Well, yeah, we have a Dr. Kelly Miller who wrote the book, Saving Your Brain. And he writes about it now because what we, we can do with brain tap in the professional version, because we wouldn't want just anybody doing this, but we have sessions that actually can speed up the left hemisphere, slow down the right or vice versa, because we can control that with the app. And so most of the time what happens with dementia, Alzheimer's, ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, if we do a, a scan with them with like the Wabi or a piece of equipment called Neuro, uh, the New Mind or what's called neuro infinity these are all different brain devices that we can measure yeah. qeg what we'll find is that the energy across the hemispheres are mixed so if you if you don't have 10.1 in the frontal lobe you're going to have that mismatch is going to start to create anxiety stress depression it's going to lead things to, to dementia then alzheimer's hmm. because that what happens in the brain is when you, we think of memory like if you think of your favorite memory it didn't just, you didn't just go back into your brain and pick out a filing cabinet and pick up that piece of paper. Six to eight places in your brain lit up at that yeah. moment because it's all sorted all over the place in your brain and then it's reassembled. 
that's your hippocampus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So stress causes that area of the brain to the blood flow to restrict. Just like if I was to tighten my muscles, mm -hmm. I'm gonna restrict my blood flow to my hands. That is happening all over the brain in the hippocampus. And that's why when we're, let's say we're in a situation where maybe we've done something a million times, we do it really well, but then we're told, get up and do this in front of a new group of 200 people. And then you're like fumbling around, you, you go, then when you're done, you go, I've done this a hundred times, I can't believe I did it. <laughs> that's because the hippocampus didn't deliver the information. Yeah. On the other hand, as we get older, unfortunately, maybe the information doesn't get delivered as fast because we have placking and all mm -hmm. the other things that happen in the brain. And what the brain will do is if it doesn't deliver that information at the right moment, like instantaneously, the speed of light, then it says, okay, that information is not there. That's where Hebb's law says those neurons that unwire together won't fire together. Yeah. Right. So the information is not there. It says we're not getting the connection. So stop trying. They called it up. They said, you know, just like on the internet, if we going for a IP address and it's not there, they're gonna say, oh, take that off the menu because it's no longer yeah. there. That memory is still there, yeah. but we can't get access to it. That's what's happening when the hippocampus gets stressed out. And then eventually what happens is the brain just starts shrinking. It all shrinks anyway. You know, every night when we go to sleep. 20% yeah, 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 earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to hydrate every morning, yeah. right? So nice. Mineral salts and, salts and water, yeah. you know, to get the body going. Uh, if you allow me to go on a technical point of that uh, um, I've been thinking and looking at, at the brain tab. So you mentioned before the blue light and the, the light that is not intense enough. And I was reading some studies that were saying that um, since the, our eyes are actually an extension of our brain outside mm -hmm. of our skull, uh, they need a certain amount of light that is quite high in terms of intensity to be stimulated when our eyes are closed. Uh, I'd like to have your feedback on that thing since on BrainTap use a low intensity light. Um, would you one day think that you're going to put some high intensity for certain uh, new BrainTap application or no, not uh, at all? For what we want to do, the eyes are 300 times more mitochondria than the brain, although they're attached mm -hmm. to the brain. That's the highest group of mitochondria in the body. So its whole job is to absorb light. Okay. You know, it also, we know there's been studies where we project light through our eyes. Yes, So that, that's the one I was So, so when, when we're talking about that, so what we're, what the, the whole thing is that we're not really working with the eyes. Although we use the eyes as the trigger, we're working with the cranial nerve too. So the brains, we're just saying there's light over here, there's light over mm -hmm. here, there's light over here, there's light over here. And the brain activates, the brain activates. It, it's more to get the brain exercising those, the nervous system. It's I not see. about the eyes itself. It's, it's more about how do we train the brain? How do we get brain fitness? And this is, it's like going to the gym. We do all these different exercises so because we want to tone our body. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not just one thing we do. So the same thing's true with brain fitness. That's why we have the, what we call the neuroplasticity technology and, you know, frequencies of light, the sound, yeah. and the vibration. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so we've talked a lot about how this affects the brain on, on different areas of neuroplasticity and, and consciously what we know but what about people that are looking more at the effects of the unconscious level right like our adaptive unconscious decision making and stuff like that right well that's that's exactly where we're that's why i tell people you don't even have to listen you can put it on fall asleep <laughs> no, you're you're our biological system is only ran 5% by our conscious mind. Mm -hmm. But people spend all their time trying to change that 5%. And it's not gonna make that big a difference. That's yeah. why, you know, when you think of how many people set their goals on January 1. Yeah, and forget uh, it, yes, January uh, 3. Almost 95% yeah. of yeah. them are, are have fallen off the wagon within 14 days. Yeah. You know, they, and then they go, well, I guess I'll get it next year. I'll mm -hmm. loop around and get that. You know, so, so it's, it's all about rehearsing. Mm -hmm. So. The unconscious, um, it's always trying to make connections to what's going on. So if it doesn't think there's a payoff, it won't keep doing it. Sure. So the, like the payoff with brain tap, of course, is we feel physiologically better. Mm -hmm. So, and then when it shows up as a behavior change in their life, they go, hey, I made that connection. Now people will keep doing it. If, if they weren't getting that connection, we wouldn't have so many users and people doing it. So, but in the, the conscious mind, what happens is people start there's a saying, all unhappiness comes from unfavorable comparisons. So what's showing up in our life and what we're thinking in our brain, if they don't match, we're unhappy. Right. But if we, if we can start to visualize what we want in our life, then we start seeing it manifest around us. Not that we're magicians, but just we're available for mm -hmm. those things to happen. Yeah. 
when we're relaxed and we're in present with our life, things just work better. And, uh, you know, we're not trying to force things, stress things out. And the subconscious, it's going to do what it does. And if we, if we're always, uh, if we're always overdriving it because of our conscious mind, we put it into that fight or flight. Because it wants to know sequence. It wants to know, you know, why are we doing this? And, you know, there's a saying, uh, Dennis Waitley said in his book, Seeds of Greatness, he, he said, first we, the subconscious is like a robot. We build the robot, now the robot's building us. You know, <laughs> that so, reminds me of our artificial <laughs> intelligence. Yes, <bit>. yes. <laughs> like our brain, that's, you know, a lot of people just, you think about how many people as they age, they, they get off work, they go to the store, they get their six pack, yeah. they go home, they sit on their couch, they pass out, yeah, they yeah. wake up, they eat dinner, they go back to the couch, they pass out, they rinse and repeat. Yeah. That's what has to change. We need to start at night. That person, if they really, what they really wanted to do was disengage their nervous system, get rid of stress. If they would have yeah. put on the brain tap, get a brain tap session, get their brain fitness up, they could have had a great quality time with their family. They could have had energy because it's all about energy in our life right now. Oh, we are energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it brain tap tap into the actual awareness, increasing the awareness of that the unconscious is sending? Like a well, brain think, is sending our body? This yeah, is. well, think about it like right now, as we're sitting here, every radio TV station in LA is being broadcast to us. We're not hearing it because we're not tuned to that frequency. Mm. So if we want to tune to the frequency of health, we've got to change our brain frequency. So that information's available. Yeah. They call it the, the global unconscious or yeah. whatever, or the morphogenetic field. Yeah. And I think that as people, you know, there, there's a reason why the light bulb was discovered in three different places at the same time. Pretty much all of it, they, they didn't have what we have today, but they're, they're inventing this thing. How did that happen? Yeah. There's something else here. I can't explain it, but I do know that, you know, like when Robert Bannister ran the four minute mile, mm -hmm. now we have high schoolers doing it. And for years they said that could never happen. Yeah. But he, he changed that. So I think that as we continue to use our brain and continue to tap into these other resources, then we're going to see incredible things happen. We're going to become more superhuman. Yeah. You know, yeah. instead of well, being... Yeah, when radio was invented, <clears throat> people were never thinking that you could send some sounds across atmosphere and air like that. And, uh, the ether, yeah. 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 Right. So it, it's right. so right. I mean, everybody's yeah. carrying in their pocket a quantum computer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, uh, somehow it's picking up, now it's picking I mean. There's more technology in our cell phones than was in the first space capsule. Yeah, there are computer the now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 this is pretty astounding. Uh, um, this this uh, uh, topic actually, I think that the MIT is uh, putting some studies on those quantum energy uh, transmission that is related to these things that we don't know but we perceive. Well, they have in the lab weighed and measured thoughts. Yeah. So uh, they're, they're they're not just nothing. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. energy there that's created and it leaves and comes back as something, you know, because energy is never destroyed. Nope. Right. So a lot of things that people used to think were metaphysical are now being scientifically mm -hmm. proven. You know, the, the, the main one is, of course, that we're light, we're yeah. energy. I mean, they know that our cells change at every 40 seconds, like we were talking about earlier, because of biophotonic exchange. It has to do with the foods we eat, mm -hmm. the people we hang out with, everything we're talking about here at Biohacking. Yeah. Those are all things that change how we show up yeah. genetically. Uh, 20% of course is mom and dad, but the rest, Jeez, you know, we can change. Environment, uh, yeah. Uh, do you think that we are going to be uh, to the extent where we're going to prove that consciousness exists? Because today, like, it's the big fight between psychology and neuroscience. Like, one says that, it, yeah, there is, and the other one says it's impossible. Well, here's the thing people want to find that. So, I'm going to deliver a television to you, and then you're going to tear it apart and try to find the studio. It's being broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go, hey, there's no studio in yeah. there. There's no consciousness. Yeah. Mm. That's because they're trying to take apart the receiver, yeah. not the transmitter. Yeah.